feel like I needed to make this story time because um, yeah, I would love to motivate someone out there. I would love to encourage, especially the young people, teenagers, you know, those of you growing in African homes who've had challenges, who've had hard times with your parents. Guys. guys welcome back to my channel so in this video I will be sharing you real life story time of how I made my first million so 1 million naira at the age of 20 guys please don't sit on this video because just grab a cup of coffee grab some water because it's kind of gonna be long it's it is gonna be long but definitely not boring so guys <laughs> I'm just so excited today because it's such a sunny day and um, yeah, we usually don't get this sun here in Germany But guys, so let's jump right to it So basically, if you come from an African home, a typical conservative African home Then you would know this, this video will so resonate with you So guys, if you are new to my channel, what are you waiting for? Seriously, am I gonna beg you guys? Seriously Subscribe because the more you subscribe the more you encourage me to do more videos guys, please begging you take a minute of silence <laughs> So yeah, let's jump right to it guys at the age of 16 I graduated high school and Yeah, that was kind of a bit of early, but I did it or I made it happen because um, I was I was very smart at school and I was able to um, have very good grades and my headmaster um, advised my parents that I was due to go for the school living certificate the high school living certificate so I you know wrote this exam with my sister and I was lucky enough to pass and I graduated high school at the age of 16 guys I was just all over the place you know the teenage age is such a it's such a challenging difficult age especially in Africa that people are not really taking their time to know you know especially parents that are so busy they are just you know all about their work they really don't focus on the on the you know psychological and mental state of, of, of teenagers so basically at 16 I just didn't know what to do I was assisting my mother in her small um, restaurant business. It was quite, it was kind of booming. Um, honestly, I didn't like it so much because I had to deal with a lot of crazy young men. <laughs> but basically, I stuck to it. And um, at the age of 18, I just kind of started figuring out that I wanted to go to university. Um, but my my father at this stage was very sick. He, he discovered he was diabetic and then the whole family savings just went down the drain um, That was a very tough challenging time for my mother, especially because my sister was a nurse and studying to become a nurse and um, At this age of 18, I just knew that I had to do something really quick to help either my parents out of this situation or myself out of this situation so basically I can first save myself before I save somebody else, right? Exactly so guys, um, I just decided I'm just gonna go out there and look for jobs. So basically we were living in this part of Lagos called um, um, Aja. So it's, it's Aja itself we were living and basically I was able to find a job as a receptionist. Um, I started working and saving money, you know, at the age of 18. I started working and guys, I started saving money until i met the love of my life right at the age of 18 and that money went down the drain <laughs> guys that was tough times so i met and fell in love with this guy who just literally swooped me off my feet you know made me you know believe what i i didn't want to believe and before i could say jack robinson everything i had saved believe me guys i was so crazy about this guy I let him know my dreams i told him of my family challenges i felt like he was there for me um i think he was there for me but you know all humans have their own challenges as well so yeah i said the story goes um this guy went traveled abroad especially because i was able to assist him with my little savings a um, couple of months after i started working and the good thing is i think i was i was taught very young the 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 
the benefits of saving so at a very young age I knew that I had to save because you know I had to save for rainy days and you know I was kind of woke with this you know I was very alert with saving so basically after a couple of months of working as a receptionist I was able to have some money and I assisted my boyfriend who traveled abroad with the hope of um, that he would assist me when I get to the university you know <laughs> and guys it happened that at the age of 19 I was you know sitting around again writing the examination that will help me go to the university and of course I did get an admission to go to the university and I was so excited and I thought I told my parents I shared the good news with my parents I also shared the news with my boyfriend that time and of course he was not supportive of it and he said to me listen you're so smart you don't have to go to school oh my god just wait two more years and I would come home and we would get married guys this was absolutely BS because this dude never even came back six years in the over the last six years he, I never saw this dude you know um yeah so as it goes that I had actually given up everything I worked for and now I was 19 and guys, I couldn't tell my parents, you know, I worked for one year plus and I just couldn't tell my mother that I, I met a guy and gave him everything I had worked for. I mean, it wasn't so much, but then it was something because like I told you, I was saving. I was always saving most of my salary because I wasn't paying any rent. I was living with my parents. I was, you know, my mother owns a restaurant, like I said, and you know, I was always, you know, I had food available to always take to work with me so I was definitely not spending on lunch I was not spending on anything else except you know transportation to and from work which was also not so far away so guys as it happened that uh, I packed my bag I said mama papa listen I'm gonna head to school and um, I have a little bit of saving I would love you to support me you know because my first tuition fee was about 250,000 naira and i felt that you know that would be like you know i had a bit of you know i i pretended that i had you know more than half of that and yeah my parents gave me some money and i just packed my bags and i think the second reason why i left home because i just couldn't have it anymore you know at that age i was you know i had several issues with my father and you know um it it came also because in the typical african home it's sometimes hard sometimes we go through you know you know abuses domestic violence and things like that so i was i, I had my own share of that even while growing up and i felt that at that age i couldn't be bullied anymore i couldn't be told what to do i just couldn't be bothered so when this chance came so i took it as a chance because um, even though i didn't have all the money i pretended that i did i packed up my bag and i left guys so I had a friend, a very good friend. I had met a couple of um, months before and um, I spoke to her, I said, listen babes, you know, can I just put up with you until I get my, you know, my shit together? And she agreed. And <laughs> guys, I knew that I wasn't going to the university. I called my parents. I said, yes, I'm at the university. Everything is fine. Um, yeah. So guys, I really didn't know what gave me this confidence because um, on one hand, I knew, just knew that I was done with my parents, you know, bickering and I just wanted to get out of the house. On the other hand, I wanted to be independent. I wanted to, you know, do something with my life. I wanted to, of course I do want it to, I wanted to go to university, but I just couldn't, you know, figure out, you know, what mistake I did with, you know, assisting my boyfriend. So I knew I needed time. So I decided that I needed a better paying job. I quit this receptionist job. Um, I started you know looking out for a new job you know and it was very painful because I spent more than two three months trying to find a job in Victoria Island because I felt like I could get more chances to get a job in the city center where I could get paid better so basically I was attending an interview one day in a restaurant, a new restaurant in Victoria Island. And I met a very sweet girl who was also there for the interview. And we got to know each other. And then, um, yeah, she kind of informed me that, you know, there was another interview taking place in a hotel, which was new, basically. 
and although she told me it was strictly by invitation i just said okay that's cool so we finished this interview we exchanged contact and we left like we never saw each other so on this day you know she told me this interview was taking place i just woke up in the morning and i said to myself listen i know i wasn't in invited for this interview but i do believe that there's something called luck and i do believe that you know I should take chances in life guys I dressed up <laughs> I dressed up got ready and I went to this hotel and it's called Lagos Oriental Hotel and that was about nine years ago um, yeah that was that was nine years ago guys so I got to this hotel and I saw a few people um, leaving and from my understanding they were actually interviewing for um, uh, food and beverages position for f and b right <laughs> so guys i walked into the ballroom and i you know I, I spoke to the reception before i went to the ballroom and i said listen i'm here for this interview they told me it's that way at the ballroom and get into the ballroom there were a couple of girls left they were about six or seven and then i just sat down and then um a guy came in with a piece of paper and he just you know called a name and they would you know one of the girls would go with him so basically um they kept on calling people until the end and you know my name wasn't there <laughs> my name just wasn't there because i wasn't invited so i was the last person and the dude came over and said listen i can find your name here what's your name i said listen i probably just you know I did something wrong and I'm not sure but you know now I'm here and said listen you're the last person and yeah it's an exception so guys I had this interview and you know with two um, great guys let's call them they were my bosses and I really loved them mr. Oliver and mr. Taiwo guys these two people were super super nice Oliver was from Germany and Taiwo was uh, Yoruba was Nigerian <laughs> After the very short interview with them, I stood up and it was really cool. It was a very nice conversation and I was leaving and they said to me, listen, they called me back. It's like, Chi Chi, listen, can you come back here on Friday? And I think that day was like on a Tuesday. And they said, can you come back here on Friday? We have a, 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 a wonderful, um, can I call it a show? It's like an industry night show taking place um, at the bar and we would like you to be there. I'm like, sure cool guys i had never worked as an fmb before i never even know what they are doing i just knew that i needed a job i needed to get my shit together and i needed to find my way to you know move back to the university but you know just with a little bit of extra cash because i didn't want to um, rely solely on my parents so guys on Friday, I appeared at this hotel. It was my first working day, precisely. Um, industry night was kind of fun because it's a place where you got where you know musicians, uh, upcoming musicians, come together to you know showcase their songs. And it was hosted by Jack Daniels, exactly. So Jack Daniels' ambassador, as of then, was uh, Mr. Rod Nuto, and that was Kate Henshaw's husband. So guys, if you know the actress Kate Henshaw, that was her husband. <laughs> and Mr. Rod was so cool. He was so nice because he had great contacts, and he was always like, you know, having these shows around different bars in Lagos. So um, this bar, um, they changed the name later to Jack Daniel's Spa because he, this guy had this, you know, strong influence on this hotel and basically he was doing this show to host, you know, um, these musicians and also, you know, invite people, you know, well-known people to come around. So guys, my first working day was amazing. I had, <laughs> I, <laughs> that night was just one night I had never had in my life because, you know, I came from a conservative African home. I wasn't exposed to partying or anything like that. So that night was like my first out of the house night. And honestly, since I wasn't living with my parents, I was able to stay at this um, job till maybe, I think it was about 1, 1 a.m. or 2 a.m. And I wasn't worried, you know? So I forgot to mention that at the end of this interview, there were only two people selected for this you know night and it was me and one other girl and this girl i 
think about 12 o'clock she was really panicking because she's like oh it's late we, where do we have to sleep do we have to go home i live on the island on the mainland so for those of you who live in lagos mainland island i was living in the island so it wasn't fa it was okay for me but the supervisor of this bar was so sweet and he told me listen don't worry yourself even if you stay out late you know it's okay the hotel has rooms they would give it to you but this girl was really panicking because she was worried that her parents might be upset with her thank god i wasn't living with my parents anymore so i could i just couldn't be bothered you know i had so much fun guys i had so much fun the crowd was mixed with expats nigerians well-known people musicians i got to meet two-face i got to meet mi guys this was the this was the highlight of my teenage age i was so happy to be away from parents <laughs> and the second reason i found that night exciting was the tips men like i didn't even know how to carry a tray i even didn't know how to serve drinks I didn't know how to mix nothing but guys I was able to get through that night and I made tips of maybe I think about 7,000 naira and that was like wow so I could make such kind of tips you know working here that was so cool um so you could serve one table and you could get like two two grand I mean people coming to this hotel were super rich if you know the Lagos Oriental Hotel it was one of the top top five-star hotel in Lagos at this time and it was you know frequented by you know really rich exposed well-traveled people guys don't sleep on this story because it's about to get more and more interesting so at the end of this night we um, I I went home um, I didn't even have a job then so I didn't have a job it was just attending one night of you know Jack Daniels night industry night it's called and afterwards um, the next Monday I got a call from the HR um, requesting that I you know turn up to the hotel and they wanted to see me but to be honest I knew that I had the, I had a very good chance because I had a very good um, relation with the supervisor in this bar and he really liked me a lot and then I was so skinny you could see me i mean i'm skinny right now but I mean, <laughs> let me show you let me show you what i look like i mean i'm skinny right now but guys when i was 19 i was so skinny and so i was like a breeze i was like a breeze you know i, I think the breeze could blow me away you know and so um i was very fast you know with whatever i was doing i was very sharp I think he really loved that about me and um, yeah he said listen I really want you in this bar because you're very um, what is the word you're very precise and you know the right thing to do and even without being told you are very proactive so proactive is the word so I was very proactive and he really loved that about me and he said I'm gonna put in the word with you and I need you to work with me so guys next day boom I had a contract on Monday and guess what when I was working as a receptionist I was earning 28,000 naira as a receptionist and at this job my salary was 45,000 base with a service charge which is going to be according to how much the hotel would make in the month so basically my salary was forty-five thousand naira and at the end of one month i could get 65 sometimes i could get 60 sometimes i could get 55 so i think the least i got in that hotel was like fifty-five thousand salary as well as service charge so like I said, the service charge varies, you know, sometimes it could be 20, sometimes it could be 15, sometimes it could be 18, you know, da 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 da. So guys, I spent the next couple of months at this job and believe me, I was saving like hell. Like in a month, I could get tips of more than, I don't know, more than 100,000 in a month, believe me and there were times i would meet people people like mi he 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 loved me i mean he met me there and he was like wow you this is the most beautiful waitress i've ever seen um 
you know some really nice celebrities musician you know I was so lucky because I wasn't working in the banquet banquet and I wasn't working in the so basically in the hotel chain you have the banquet where they have the event and then you also have the the proper F&B so like guests come into the hotel to have breakfast and stuff I wasn't working there because in this in this department it was really tough because um, you know the waitresses there were working in the mornings and um, <laughs> The waitresses there were working in the mornings and sometimes there was usually a lot of crowd because people were coming from breakfast and breakfast is usually included in the price of the hotel and so most times this this people working in this department doesn't really have a lot of tips but guys i was working in the bar so i was resuming maybe at, at i think at four in the evening and i was closing at one or two in the morning and so in my department at this bar it was just more flexibility you know i could sleep after two i could you know wake up in the morning go do whatever i want to do and then you know come to work and the good thing i forgot to mention was that i wasn't paying rent guys i was sleeping at the hotel the hotel had a room for staffs and so guess what i was saving as hell and i was going home in the weekends to my girlfriend you know and we had such a good time because i had very good contacts in this hotel we're always hanging out sometimes when i'm not working but guys i really looked forward to working every day because the people were always nice to me i think there's one thing about people that are wealthy especially in nigeria they just they're very nice you know they just they they treat people nicely it doesn't matter who you are it doesn't matter where you're coming from they just love to treat you nicely and so guys i had to be here for like i said a couple of months i think about a year two months and then i was also spending time applying for my university place again and then finally i got admission to go back to the university because I missed the first one obviously and by the time I got this admission guys I had made I had hit the 1 million gap so guys um, the summary of my video is basically that <laughs> I didn't get I didn't achieve 1 million by becoming a brand influencer or by becoming a I don't know some some you know doing some shady jobs or whatever I achieved the mark of 20 of 10 of sorry of 1 million naira at the age of 20 by working as a waitress in a very nice hotel in a five-star hotel with a lot of tips <laughs> and with a lot of nice people so guys this was my story I just think that I wanted to get this out there because I don't think there is anything impossible in life and I'm gonna be sharing with you how I also achieved 10 million naira a couple of years later <laughs> because at the end of the day this 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 when you achieve things like this it gives you the confidence that you would achieve more so basically a couple of years later after I graduated and of course I got a job I kind of achieved the 10 million mark but guys that wasn't easy also that was like that was that was that wasn't easy so I hope you enjoyed this my story time and um, yeah I hope that it resonates with someone there is nothing impossible for you to achieve if you if you have and the, the funny thing is I wouldn't really say I had a goal about you know that you know wanting to achieve that amount at the end of the day I surpassed that amount so basically I had you know more than 1 million in my account at that age before going to the university but I really didn't have it as a goal you know my only goal was I needed to save some money I wanted to go to school I wanted to prove to my parents that I could be independent um, and I basically didn't write things down I basically did not you know have you know da, 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 da. it just happened but then I think that there are quite a lot of things that you know I learned in this journey I think one is you know take chances 
take a lot of chances because if I had not turned up at that interview I wouldn't have had this job even though my name wasn't you know included and number two is work hard work hard guys and people see that because you know I was happy I was always happy to do whatever I you know you know had to do um, I was I always did my best I always put my best foot out you know that's what I mean I always put my best foot out um, number three is um, be nice be nice and smile guys smile it doesn't matter what you're going through you know believe me at this age I just knew that you know I had my life in my own hands and I had to really do what I had to do I really didn't learn things all these things from anywhere but guys I was this free person who was kind I would go the extra way and a lot of people saw that and they rewarded me for that I would you know go beyond what I was asked to do. I would be super, super nice to people. People saw that and they were just, you know, happy to, you know, reciprocate, you know. Um, fourth, what advice do I have for the fourth? Um, let's see, what else did I learn? Well, I learned also that, you know, um, where you are at that time is not where you're gonna be for, you know, the rest of, you know, your life. I learned that moving forward in life matters a lot so you know like I said I was there for a couple of months a year plus and I felt like you know it's time to move forward though it was a bit sad people were a bit like oh my god Chi Chi don't go where are you going I said listen I have to go to school I promised my parents I am in school you know I just had to keep up the you know keep up the lights you know <laughs> and so i learned that i had to move forward you know i didn't want to be like carried away by the money i was seeing i saw something big ahead of me and i wanted to pursue that and fifth and finally be yourself be yourself and own your story you know i've always been myself and i have always had this confidence that you know um, I could achieve a lot of things, you know, and that 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 took me a long way. So, guys, I will be sharing the next story uh, story time of how I made my first ten million naira, and I look I look forward <laughs> to this video. So I'm gonna love you and leave you again, and see you in my next video. Bye.